For years, I've been neglecting the value proposition that a used office PC with a GPU slapped in has. My stance on it has always been clear. If you can't afford a normal gaming PC, then you should save up your money until you can afford one. And if you need a PC immediately, then buy the cheapest office PC you can find and just play on cloud gaming in the meantime. This was my mentality, not because I don't think people without an insane amount of money shouldn't be gaming, but I never considered an entire other demographic of PC enthusiasts who would do something like this until I became one. In light of a looming recession, extreme inflation, and massive layoffs, no one, not even me, is safe. It's because of those reasons I have decided out of necessity to sell off my current gaming PC that I featured in a recent video and downsize to something more manageable until things start to turn around. If I only used a PC to play video games, I would be entirely fine with just selling it off and playing games on my phone or, or just abstaining for a while. But my computer is my home base. I do literally everything on it. I uh, do my taxes, I edit videos, connecting with friends, making stupid thumbnails, and it was how I previously did my day job. I need a computer that can at the very least be able to edit these videos on YouTube, do some light gaming, and be able to handle other easy duties. But I've only allowed myself a $200 budget to get this done, which was an absolute challenge, but I think I was able to make it work. I knew I wouldn't be able to do a custom built PC from the ground up at that budget, so I opted to search for Dell, Optiplexes, or HP workstations on eBay and my local marketplace. There are so many variants that it was kind of difficult to find one that fit my budget and wasn't something like 15 years old. I wanted to at the very least stay in the last decade. Something within Intel's fourth gen of processors would be fine, but sixth gen would be even better. For reference, most used office workstations you buy will come with a case, motherboard, CPU and cooler, power supply, and maybe a single small stick of RAM if you're lucky. If you just need an office PC, you usually just need an SSD and the PC is good to go. After searching for a while, I found someone selling this Dell Optiplex 3020MT for $50 and I knew it would be perfect. The size of this Optiplex is big enough so that it can fit a full-sized graphics card. It allows me to make other modifications to it and it even came with a small 250 gig SSD. But it wasn't all perfect. It only came with a single four gig stick of DDR3 RAM, which is not enough for what I'm gonna do with it. And while Dell power supplies are usually pretty good, this one's only 290 watts and wouldn't be able to power a GPU effectively. Also considering it doesn't have a six plus two pin to power a GPU safely, I wouldn't wanna use some unsafe adapter to get power to a GPU from a SATA cable. It also came a little beat up, so I hope this small damage to the back won't stop me from putting in a graphics card. The CPU included in this PC was an Intel Core i5-4570, a four-core, four-thread processor which is clocked at 3.2 GHz and boosts up to 3.6 GHz. It's an okay CPU, and if I was using a low-power GPU like a GTX 1050 or something, it would be fine, but I wanted something a little beefier. So instead of spending like $100 on an i7-4770K, I went with an Intel Xeon E3 1245V3, a server-style CPU that works on this motherboard and has some impressive specs for the price. It has a faster base speed at 3.4 GHz and faster boost speed at 3.8, but most impressively, it has double the threads that the previous CPU has. I picked this CPU up online for only $30 and was able to sell the old CPU for $15 to offset some of the cost. I'll give a full price breakdown at the end and list out all the components in the description below. The four gigs of RAM that was included in my Optiplex was just not going to cut it. The CPU supports DDR3 RAM, so I just picked up 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM for 20 bucks. The Patriot Viper 3 Black Mamba that runs at 1866 mega transfers per second, which isn't fast for DDR4 or DDR5 standards, but it will work just fine in this configuration. I probably could have gotten a better price if I went with four sticks of four gig memory, but I am limited in choices as my motherboard only supports two DIMM slots. 16 gigs of RAM will help a lot more with video editing and multitasking as this PC will be my main rig for a while. I think it was definitely worth the extra 20 bucks. I think that is the real reason why I like creators like Nerd on a Budget or OzTalks Hardware, among others. These creators focus heavily on budget and cheap computers that help thousands or millions of people around the world. It's really easy for a lot of people to say, hey, that PC is trash. My RTX 4080 is way better. But let me tell you, the teenager who mowed lawns all summer and got his first PC and is finally able to play with his friends and enjoy everything that PCs have to offer, that kid will appreciate their computer way more than someone online complaining that their performance is pretty bad when gaming in 4K and it's not, you know, 500 FPS or whatever. And while my channel is 100% focused on cheap or budget gaming solutions, as a personal mindset, I truly believe in people saving as much money where they can and not having to spend double the amount of money for only like a 5% increase. 
Not everyone wants or needs a $1,500 gaming PC. For example, if someone doesn't game ever, but they want a PC to do schoolwork and possibly try out GTA RP a few times, is it really valuable to them to spend $1,000 on a computer? Why not start with something cheap and if after a year or two you find out you do love this crap, you can start saving up and make some good decisions on what kind of computer you want and how you're going to use it. Okay, now that half the audience left after that tangent, let's move on to the graphics card. I wanted something affordable, but also as strong as possible. A strong contender was an RX 588 gig, which is an incredible card for the cost, but I couldn't find any locally or online that fit the price point I wanted. An RTX 3060 would have blown the entire budget, but I really would have loved the 12 gigs of VRAM. So I landed in the middle and decided on a GTX 1070 from EVGA. This card still has some amazing performance in 2023, and considering I was able to get it for only $90, the price of performance on this is going to be insane. The 8 gig of VRAM is going to help a lot in some of the more intensive games and while video editing. And sure, I could have gone with a GTX 1080, but I think the CPU would be bottlenecking the GPU at that point, so the 1070 is a very happy medium. But like I said earlier, I don't want to use a sketchy adapter to power this GPU, even though realistically it would probably be fine for the short term. I just went ahead and decided to replace the power supply altogether. Since I'm using a tower style Optiplex, I can easily slide in a full size ATX power supply and it will fit just fine. The only problem is that Dell motherboards don't use the standard 24 pin PSU connector. They use this cute little six pin cable, but with a not so sketchy adapter for five bucks on Amazon, I can convert my 24 pin to fit into this cute slot on my motherboard. After doing a lot of research, I found people have no issues using this kind of adapter as all this is doing is changing the pinout. This PC isn't anything fancy, and I don't intend to keep it for 10 years. I just used a 500 watt Thermaltake PSU from Amazon for 30 bucks, but that was only on a crazy good sale. So if you're looking to replicate this build, feel free to buy the 430 watt variant for a little cheaper and it'll be more than enough. If I didn't already have the 500 watt, I would have just bought the 430. A lot of people really hate this power supply because they're very loyal to the PSU tier list and believe that everyone should only use tier A power supplies and everything else is a ticking time bomb waiting to happen. For those people, I'm going to remind you that this entire PC costs $200 and is not something people will keep as their main rig forever. So a lower tier PSU will suffice. If you want to buy a $100 power supply for this, you can go ahead. <laughs> Testing the size of the Optiplex, I found out this GPU does not fit because of this stupid drive cage. The drive cage is there to hold two 3.5 inch hard drives, but I don't have any of those and will probably not need any for the lifetime of this machine. So I just wanted to remove it altogether. I initially thought I could just unscrew it and remove it, but Dell being Dell decided to actually use rivets to staple this into the metal directly. I could just take a hammer to it, but I don't want to damage the machine any more than it already is. I removed literally everything in the machine first, the cables, the motherboard, even the power supply. I just wanted a fresh canvas to work in for now. After doing some quick research, I found out you can simply use a power drill to drill through the rivets and release it. If you're going to do this, please don't follow how I did it. Go watch the Game Benches video on how to do this properly. He gives a full breakdown with what tools you need and everything. After a few tries of using the wrong size bits, I finally was able to release the drive cage to freedom. I hate the look of Dell Optiplexes, but I didn't want to recase it and add even more cost to this build. So not knowing anything about painting electronics, I just went to my local Ace Hardware and bought a $5 can of white primer and paint. Before painting, I cleaned the outside of the best I could and just tried doing very many light coats. Some people online who do this like to cover up certain things so they don't get painted, but I kind of just wanted everything to be white. You could even take it up another notch and build an acrylic side panel with magnets to try to make this seem like a real gaming PC, but that is just so extra. For me, a fresh cone of white paint will be more than enough. It's giving office space vibes. I kept getting rained on while trying to paint this thing, so I wasn't able to make the paint as smooth as I wanted, but this will have to do for now. I think two or three more coats would have made it perfect, but I do kind of like the rustic look. All right, let's get a build montage going and then benchmark this bad boy.
Okay, the PC is looking great and the benchmarks were honestly pretty surprising. It's so amazing that you can have a great time on a PC that is this low cost. Here's the total cost of everything I purchased that was 100% necessary for this build. Coming in just over $200 after selling that extra CPU it came with, but this is just what I paid. I think if you're trying to replicate this, you can get some amazing deals on some of this to get it below that $200 price point, especially on the Dell Optiplex. Uh, at first, don't go to eBay because you're gonna have to pay a lot for shipping. Look on OfferUp or Facebook Marketplace and you'll find some amazing deals from people just trying to get rid of their old family computer. You can scoop them up at a bargain and they will just be happy to get it out of their house. If you have an extra $50 to spend, I recommend going up to a sixth gen processor workstation so you'll get more power out of your GPU and bump up to DDR4 RAM. Usually when I build computers on this channel, I end up selling them after the video to help out my local PC gaming community but to finally build a computer that I know will be mine going forward for the time being, I feel very glad that you guys were able to witness it and see what kind of hardware and circumstances I'm working with. And maybe realize that doing something like this is more than enough for you or might help you out during the tough times. If you're considering making something like this and have any questions about replacements or substitutions or anything, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer everyone. If you liked this video and it provided value to you, please like the video below. And I'm trying to hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you could help me out with that and hit the subscribe button and bell, I would really appreciate it. My name is Jason, thanks for watching.